Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is this series is actually a series of plotting tutorials using Matplotlib in Python. Now in this tutorial we'll be looking at the histogram plots. Now, uh, histogram plots helps us to visualize the distribution or a spread in a particular data set. Let's say I have the data regarding the population of a particular city and I want to see how many people live with, how many people are there in a particular age group, let's say like between 20 and 30, 30 and 40 or something like that then in that kind of a case histogram plots will be very useful for me to look at that okay so for this example uh, to explain histogram give an idea of how to draw a histogram we will be using this example over here we will be constructing uh, some arti an artificial population or an artificial population of 1000 people and we will draw the we will get the IQs of them okay and then we will we'll do the histogram plot of that now, if you have read somewhere, you might have noticed that uh, the average human IQ is, actu is actually a, uh, is, has a uniform distribution, I mean normal distribution to it. That is, if you just take some random number, random number of people and give them IQ test, you will notice the human IQ is, uh, has a no is actually a normal distribution uh, with a mean, uh, with a mean set around 100 and the standard deviation about 15, that is actually a rule of thumb. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a variable with the value 100. And I'm going to create another variable SD with the value 15 and I'm going to uh, set n equals 1000 so I'm going to do, generate 1000 number ran, 1000 random numbers normally distributed about the mean 100 with the standard deviation 15 so let these 1000 numbers be stored in IQ because IQ will have the IQs of I mean several people 1000 people over here okay with a mean around 100 and the standard deviation about 15 uh, about the, uh, having a normal distribution about 100 over here thereby we have 1000 values over here saved inside the value IQ fair enough and now first what we are going to do is we are going to draw the histogram plot over here now drawing this histogram plot is constructing this is very easy you just type plt.hist and then you pass in the variable for which you have to draw the histogram and then you have to specify what you call as a bin size so actual data can be so large in number so it might be convenient to actually clump them together into, into smaller bunches okay into, into smaller ranges so that it's actually a little more easier to look at easier to look at so we have to specify a bin size okay and uh, let's me put the bin size to be like uh, 20 for now and then what i have to do i have to specify a color if I don't specify it will automatically pick a color on its own so let me specify actually a color and the way argument for that is face color not the color or colors it's actually face color for histo histogram plot and I said this to, this to be chocolate color you can set any color you want I thought, I thought this is a little funny and this also looks good anyway I set a label to it and I set this to be normed uh, for now I'll set this to be false I'll, t I'll talk to you guys about what normed is and now I have my x label y label title grid legends and show and if i run this plot over here voila this is how my IQ, uh, this is how my uh, iq distribution histogram looks like now to be honest i have to say this plot sucks because <laughs> i would i would prefer this iq plots to be much more better with my, uh, the colors being a little more brighter and we get the lines to be much more enhanced okay uh, that i would have preferred that so what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to change the style of this plot and i notice within the when i draw this histogram plot with the classic style it renders out pretty well and now if i run this with the classic style check this out now this histogram over here now this is perfect because it's colored well and the colors are sharp and the lines are sharp and this plot has rendered pretty well okay now this is how you draw draw a histogram other than that everything else is the same and now what you can actually do is just instead of being leaving it for here you can actually do a little more uh, modifications the same next thing that we're going to do is instead of ac having the actual count for instance if you run this code over here on the y, y axis you what you have is you have the actual count of the people for instance if you have to look at this a little carefully for this particular group over here for which I kept my cursor more than 120 people have an IQ uh, have an IQ I mean more than 120 people have an IQ more than this particular in this particular range over here so instead of having this as in uh, actual count if I want them in, in uh, what do I say let's say if I want them in uh, fr fraction uh, fraction I can use this I, ca I can actually normalize this plot for that I have to use true over here 
Now if I put this to be true, this will be normalized and I will get a fraction and there you go. Now this actually gives me the fraction of the amount of people uh, in the given amount of people. So this actually corresponds to little more than 0 0.025 or little more than 2.5% um, uh, of the population like that. So I can actually normalize this if I want. Now I can actually move a bit further and actually get uh, actually get the specific values out of it directly. What I mean is, uh, after getting this histogram plot, okay, they can actually extract the counts and the bin bins that have been used, so that I can use them explicitly. For instance, I when I run this particular line over here, this histogram plot, while doing all the calculation, it will just generate the counts and bins, and I can actually get those counts and bins in these particular arguments. And you also get some extra variables of data over here that will be stored in this, but we don't need this extra. So we just put this only for completion sake. And now if we run this over here, you get the same plot. The only difference is that you get these data out, which I can use for, which I can use conveniently. And now what I do is that in all these plots, um, what, why am I typing that? Yeah. So in all these plots, if I look at it, this x-axis is a bit vague okay because uh, if I want to know what this distribution is I just have to use my gut feel to figure this out on the other hand to make this a little more informative what I'm going to do is that let me put the, activate the ticks break uh, break the x-axis using the bins okay now here if I calculate the, if I take the bins value out because of this I can use this over here and check this out now this is actually a bit cluttered but if I expand this plot now if you look at it this is more relevant now if you look at it I can clearly say that uh, little more than 120 people have an uh, IQ between 91 and 96.2 now how informative is this one over here this is actually much more informative now this is the advantage of actually extracting the variables out this is one advantage the other advantage is that I can actually plot the counts or uh, plot the counts uh, using some other plot like this one okay now what I've done over here is on the top of this histogram I actually plotted the I plotted this line over here and this if I want I can also I can also do this kind of stuff and with this actual values I can use them for some other calculations if I have any in the future as well. So this is how you use histogram and this is how you set up the bin sizes and break them break the x-axis so that it's much more informative okay and although while you run this the actually the uh, values and the x-axis are actually cluttered up uh, you can actually go and tweak them up in to tweak them up easily so that's not a difficulty okay now that's all i have for you all in this video thank you for watching and i'll see you all next time in another interesting video till then take care